You're watching Let the Quran Speak. Now we answer questions we receive from you, our viewers. And of course, if you have a question yourself, you can visit our website, www.quranspeaks.com. Okay, Brother Shabir, this question is about meditation. The question is, we know that the Prophet meditated. How should Muslims view meditation? Is it obligatory in our religion? Does the Quran or Sunnah describe how we should meditate? And is it true that the Prophet said that one hour of meditation is better than 70 years of prayer? Hmm. Okay, so the, how, well, meditation is mentioned in the Quran a number of times using different words. Um, um, often we are encouraged by the Quran to ponder over the Quran itself. So the word tafakkur, pondering, or tadabbur, which also means a, a lot of deliberation over the meaning of the Quran itself. Um, and, and the Quran also encourages us to ponder the signs of God, which are evident everywhere in, in God's creation. For example, in the third chapter of the Quran, the 190th uh, verse uh, tells us to, well, describes the believers as those who ponder the creation of the heavens uh, and, and the earth. Mm -hmm. The 67th chapter of the Quran at the beginning uh, invites uh, believers to look up into the heavens and see if you can find any fault therein. And of course, the result that is expected is that you will glorify God after seeing the wonders of his creation. Uh, the Quran tr encourages Muslims to travel and to see how God has initiated creation and so on. So this is one aspect of pondering. The, the other might be silent meditation. It is mentioned that the Prophet, peace be upon him, prior to his receiving the revelation, he used to retire to a cave and practice what is called the Hanmuth. Uh, which is uh, some form of meditation that was known to the Arabs before, mm -hmm. uh, before he received the re specific revelation. Uh, but uh, within the religious teachings of Islam itself, uh, it is mentioned that if a person uh, performs the ablutions uh, at, at home and then or goes to the mosque early before the, the actual prayer, uh, then that time spent in the mosque is uh, regarded as if the person was busy in prayer. So what might he be doing at, in the mosque at that time? He may be engaged in some silent uh, meditation or just simply uh, recounting one's activities and, and maybe repenting before God or just thinking about things that are good and, and holy or maybe reciting the Quran, which is another way of uh, meditation. Uh, at the end of the day, uh, one may want to re recollect one's uh, events uh, or one's actions and uh, sort of the good from the bad and, and ask God to forgive us for, for what we've done wrong. Mm -hmm. it, 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 an interesting uh, story in this regard is mentioned about one of the companions of the Prophet, peace be upon him, who said that at the end of the day he would just cleanse his heart of, of all uh, negative thoughts that he had towards other people. And uh, it is noted that it was for this reason that the Prophet, peace be upon him, recommended this man uh, as uh, a person who would go to paradise. Mm -hmm. So it seems then that med meditation is a very integral part of um, the Islamic faith then? Yes. Uh, many Muslims, uh, especially those who go out in what is referred to as the Jama'at Tabliq, mm -hmm. a sort of missionary uh, endeavor uh, th that, that is confined mainly to uplifting the spirit of Muslims. So, so it's missionaries going to other Muslims. Mm -hmm. uh, they often uh, stay in the mosque between the Fajr and, uh, and, and the, the early morning prayer and uh, until sunrise, which could have them sitting there waiting for about half an hour to an hour. And in, in, in that time, they would be remembering God by reciting some of the names of God, by saying, glory be to God, for example. Uh, and, and this would be a sort of meditation. They may refer to it as muraqaba, uh, which is another word for meditation. So there's no sense that you have to go into a, a, a private place, be solitary, uh, spend a particular amount of time meditating. It, it's, it, it seems like it's entirely up to the individual. Yes, there are these many different ways. You're and, also and different asked. People will do different things. And that's right. So things. any one of these is is fine. Um, the important thing is of obviously to have balance and to just like in, with eating, we need uh, a, a balanced diet. We need many different ingredients. Uh, in a similar way with uh, meditation, we have many different forms, and it's good to do a little bit of this and a little bit of that, benefit from all of the forms. As for the hadith that you asked about, uh, it's mentioned by Ibn Hibban in his collection, 
And uh, this is one of the lesser known books, uh, not as authentic as the more popular books uh, such as Bukhari and Muslim. Uh, but in any case, a hadith of this nature that promises uh, a great deal of reward for simple actions uh, are uh, mentioned by uh, Zubair Siddiqui in his uh, book uh, a Hadith for Beginners as the type of hadith which people might have invented over time for good reasons, for encouraging uh, good, good work and we wouldn't give them uh, a great credence. Mm -hmm. Would you encourage Muslims to meditate every day then? Uh, normally, the, the five daily prayers which are prescribed for Muslims involve uh, meditation. Um, I mean, that's the essence of the whole prayer because you are reciting praises of God, but you're thinking about what you're reciting, you're thinking about God and the life hereafter. This itself is meditation, and not only is this recommended, but it's obligatory yes, for yes. Muslims. All right, thank you for your time, Brother Shabir. You're welcome. That's all the time we have. Visit our website, www.quranspeaks.com. From all of us here at Let the Quran Speak, thank you for watching. I'll see you next week. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar.